If you look at any list of recommendations for the best stand mixer, chances are a KitchenAid will be at the very top. But KitchenAid wasn't always the most popular stand mixer. Hi, I'm Julie and I'm a business historian. And today, I'm taking a look back at the history of the KitchenAid mixer and how it became one of the most iconic and recommended kitchen appliances for home cooks and professionals alike. The story of KitchenAid starts with Herbert Johnston, a talented engineer and founder of the Hobart Manufacturing Company in Ohio. As the story goes, one day in 1908, Johnston was walking past a bakery window where he saw the baker mixing dough with a metal spoon and decided to invent an easier way. The result was the Hobart Mixer, a mixing device that could be powered by an electric motor or by a pulley. It used what the patent called planetary actuation, meaning that the mixer's beater rotated one way as the mixer moved it around the bowl in the opposite direction. With planetary actuation, the beater was able to reach all parts of the bowl without needing human intervention to scrape the bottom and the sides. The mixer could also attach grinding tools to its motor. The Hobart mixer featured 20 attachments designed specifically for bakeries, including a meat chopper, bread crumber, nut paste maker, and vegetable slicer. In 1915, the Hobart Manufacturing Company placed an ad for the Hobart mixer in the trade publication Baker's Review, and then they waited. Bakers were skeptical. The Hobart mixer was expensive, and many thought it was too high priced to be successful. But to the surprise of everyone, including the Hobart Manufacturing Company, within two days of the ad's publication, they received a telegram. One of the largest bakers in the country wanted to know the price of the mixer. Within a year, it was almost sold out. And from that moment on, the Hobart mixer was a massive success amongst bakers. The success of its mixer prompted Hobart to create a version for small businesses and the home. At the time, cooking typically involved a lot of preparation, including cutting vegetables, making doughs and batters, beating eggs, whisking cream, chopping meat, and grinding coffee. All of this preparation required time, energy, an extensive number of specialized cooking tools, and a pile of dirty dishes. Hobart's domestic mixer offered an alternative. What if you had one appliance that did all of those tasks for you? This concept proved popular during testing when, according to company legend, a Hobart executive's wife stated, I don't care what you call it, all I know is it's the best KitchenAid I've ever had. The name KitchenAid stuck. Hobart marketed KitchenAid not simply as a mixer, but as an electrical food preparer. With the help of attachments, the electric KitchenAid could mix, stir, beat, whip, cut, cream, slice, chop, grind, strain, and freeze. Early ads read, At the snap of a switch, KitchenAid performs all the tiring, time-consuming tasks connected with food preparation, and leaves only the pleasant part of cooking. Advertisements called KitchenAid a wonderful electric servant, and noted, Where there are servants, KitchenAid transforms them into expert cooks and their contentment increases efficiency. All this talk about servants may give you some idea of who could afford to buy this modern electric food preparer. At a price tag of $189.50, or more than $3,000 in today's money, the KitchenAid was not cheap. And while today's household stand mixers are portable, the Model H5 KitchenAid weighed some 65 pounds. The price and weight were not the only complications Hobart faced as it tried to get KitchenAid into the home. Despite the widespread acceptance of Hobart mixers in commercial bakeries, Hobart struggled to find stores willing to carry the KitchenAid mixer. So Hobart decided to bring KitchenAid directly to consumers, using door-to-door -door saleswomen, hosting demonstration parties, and advertising in magazines. And word about this labor-saving wonder for the kitchen was starting to get out. One newspaper wrote, Until the advent of KitchenAid, science and invention had done little or nothing to lessen the drudgery of a task which presents itself with deadly monotony, three times a day, seven days in the week, 52 weeks in the year. I refer to the task of preparing the family's food. But with the advent of KitchenAid, all this was changed as in the twinkling of an eye in thousands of American homes. KitchenAid blazed a path to freedom from backache and fatigue in cooking and baking, in canning and preserving, in making tempting salads and delicious frozen desserts. By 1926, the price of a KitchenAid had been reduced to $150, or about $2,400 today. 
In an attempt to make the mixer more accessible for middle-class consumers, KitchenAid began offering a monthly payment plan. And in 1928, KitchenAid introduced a smaller and lighter version, the Model G. The Model G weighed about 38 pounds, meaning it could be more easily moved around the kitchen. I wasn't able to find sales information for KitchenAid in its early years, but sources suggest that, despite its price, the KitchenAid was widely popular. And that popularity inspired some new competition for KitchenAid. In 1930, a Chicago company did what KitchenAid could not. It introduced an inexpensive stand mixer called the Sunbeam Mixmaster. The Mixmaster offered to do many of the same labor-saving, beating, stirring, whipping, and mixing of a KitchenAid at a fraction of the cost. The Sunbeam Mixmaster was a little less than $25. Despite being introduced to the middle of the Great Depression, the Mixmaster caught on like wildfire. At first, the Mixmaster was primarily a mixer, but it soon added attachments like a juice extractor, oil dripper, and combination food chopper and meat grinder. Like the KitchenAid, these attachments transformed the Mixmaster into a food preparer that could tackle all kinds of challenging or tedious cooking tasks. But unlike KitchenAid, the Mixmaster motor could be removed from its stand and transformed into a portable electric hand mixer. The Mixmaster also had an automatic beater ejector for easier cleanup. These features, coupled with the lower price, gave Mixmaster an edge on KitchenAid. To compete with the Mixmaster, KitchenAid needed a radical redesign. And so the company brought in one of the leading industrial designers of the time, Eggman Ahrens. Aaron streamlined KitchenAid's design, cutting its weight in half. The new efficient model enabled KitchenAid to reduce its price to just $49.50. When the new mixer was introduced in 1937 as the Model K, KitchenAid sales increased 100%. Sales were further bolstered in the 1950s, when KitchenAid mixers became available in bright colors like Petal Pink, Island Green, and Sunny Yellow. Consumers could now match their KitchenAid to their kitchen's color scheme. Eggman Aaron's iconic designs would become the standard for KitchenAid mixers and remain virtually unchanged today. Now the Sunbeam Mixmaster would continue to dominate the stand mixer market for the next several decades. But KitchenAid was starting to build its own devoted fan base, made up of professionals and home chefs. Perhaps the biggest turning point was the introduction of the model K5A, a powerful heavy-duty KitchenAid mixer that made professional cooking and baking easier at home. The model K5A received rave reviews in the 1975 Cook's Catalog, where leading food authorities like Chef James Beard listed the best, the necessary, and the special in kitchen equipment and utensils. The catalog noted, The Hobart KitchenAid 5A is generally conceded to be the best American-made machine for beating, mixing, whipping, and kneading. Any kitchen that regularly turns out brioches for breakfast, spinach souffles for supper, or dacquoise for dessert is inadequately equipped without one. It will beat and whip faster and more thoroughly, incorporate more air to create a greater volume, than any other machine. Cooks respected the KitchenAid mixer for its power, durability, and versatility. KitchenAid mixers have since been a favorite among some of the most recognizable names in the food world, including Julia Child, Martha Stewart, Ina Grattan, and Alton Brown. For home cooks, a KitchenAid stand mixer became a symbol of someone who takes cooking or baking very seriously. Today, KitchenAid stand mixers are available in more than 20 colors. And because they are usually prominently displayed in home kitchens, KitchenAid mixers can be reflective of personality and style. Some consumers even have their KitchenAid mixers custom painted with things like floral or flame designs. Attachments have been a key component of KitchenAid stand mixers since the beginning. They are what make KitchenAid more than a simple electric mixer. In its early years, KitchenAid accessories included a bowl, flat beater, and wire whip. Optional attachments included a meat chopper, cereal and coffee grinder, vegetable slicer, shredder, strainer, shifter, juicer, pastry knife, dough hook, pouring chute, hot and cold water jacket to control the temperature of the mixing bowl, oil dropper for salad dressing, splash cover, ice chipper, and ice cream freezer. You could even purchase a special cabinet for storing all your KitchenAid attachments. By the 1930s, KitchenAid attachments also included a pea sheller, can opener, knife sharpener, and even a silver buffer. Now, several of these attachments have since been discontinued. 
but according to KitchenAid, an attachment made all the way back in 1919 will still fit on one of its mixers today. So let's see if this vintage citrus juicer works on my KitchenAid. I found the citrus juicer on eBay and it doesn't have any identifying marks, but the listing said it was from the 1940s. Now it's missing a few parts. It should have a strainer basket and a stand to hold a glass. But we have the most important pieces, which are the reamer and the juicer bowl. To use the juicer, you first have to loosen the attachment knob on the front of the mixer and then insert the reamer and juicer bowl into the attachment socket with the spout pointed down. And it's a little hard to see, but the socket is square shaped and so is this metal piece that connects the reamer to the mixer. Then you tighten the attachment knob until the reamer and juicer bowl are secure. And now the mixer can be turned on. The reamer is spinning so it looks like it's working. So let's make some fresh orange juice. I have to say, I am impressed. This juicer attachment from around the 1940s is still compatible with a modern KitchenAid mixer. This really shows how little the overall design of KitchenAid mixers has changed. And I think it's great that if you want to buy a new mixer, you don't have to buy all the attachments again. You can just use the ones you already have. Today, the KitchenAid brand is consistently rated as the best stand mixers. What distinguishes KitchenAid stand mixers has always been quality and durability. In 2021, the New York Times called the KitchenAid Artisan Series 5 Quart Tilt Head Stand Mixer a workhorse worthy of heirloom status. Whipping up cakes, cookies, and creams with ease, and kneading sticky bread and pizza dough without straining. A KitchenAid mixer is intended to last a lifetime. And after 100 years, the KitchenAid mixer still does exactly what it was first made to do. Make cooking a little easier. Thank you so much for watching. This topic was suggested by viewer Kristen, so thank you Kristen. If you like this video and would like to learn more about the history of ordinary things like the KitchenAid stand mixer, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel below. Thank you again and I'll see you next time.